In this last section, I'm going to look at the effect of world prices on local markets, local being the Australian market. What we need to remember here is that Australia is not big enough to influence the world price of most traded goods and services. After all, it's about 1.8% of the total world GDP. Therefore, Australia is a price taker, regardless of the local demand and supply conditions may be. So it means they take the price what is dictated by the world market. Let's look at it diagrammatically. Here we have the local market, which is the Australian market. Okay, there's nothing else from post on it. It's operating at PE price at the quantity demanded QE. For any given good, the world price is PW, which is uh, in a demand and supply diagram next to the local one. So there's the world market. As you can see here, if the price is set higher, um, then our current price, then what will happen is that the world price will be dominating. That means that Australia is a price taker, so that we have this price from the world superimposed on the local market. In other wor words, P world is the world price, so that our own PE, our price equilibrium here, does not apply. Now what that does, it creates an artificial surplus. As you can see here in our local market, Q2 minus Q1. Now what happens to that is that that surplus is exported out to other countries. Now that's exports, now let's look at imports. What happens there? In this instance, and this is more commonly the case, especially in relation to car manufacturers, that the world price, in this instance, PW, is lower than our operating equilibrium price. So that creates a new different type of scenario. So if that's lower than our operating PE, um, what that will mean is that a shortage of Q2 minus Q1 is created. So if you can see in the local market, the demand um, is relatively uh, higher. Okay, the price the quantity is higher, but our local manufacturers can't compete, and therefore only willing to produce Q1. So in conclusion, Q2 is demanded by uh, consumers, but only Q1 is supplied by our local manufacturers. So this shortage, as it's diagrammatically represented here, of Q1, Q2, represents the amount of imports that are going to come into our market from overseas, from the world market. Another scenario that I want to draw for you is the imposition of a tariff. A tariff is a tax on a foreign good. You can see here that if we put a tax on a foreign good, that means that the cost of production for cars in the world market, I'm using cars as an example, means that supply has decreased for the world market which means that we have a new um, world price too if you like operating in the Australian market. Now you can see where it intersects the demand curve locally in Australia. It's a Q4 which means at the higher price the demand is actually less corresponding in relation to the supply curve and this is why the tariff got put out in the first place it has increased local production from Q1 to Q3. You can see here, because there's a higher price that they can um, charge for their cars, which means the increases the production. The effect of this is, is that we have a smaller shortage of Q4 minus Q3, which is a lower amount of imports. Importantly, as I've mentioned before, the reason why the tariff got put on in the first place is to protect local jobs by increasing in local production from Q1 to Q3. The cost has been that because the prices have got more expensive, the demand has dropped from Q2 to Q4, and this represents a misallocation of resources. And that's one of the main reasons why there have been arguments to reduce tariffs like they have been in Australia back down from 
PW2 to PW and what that does it it loses jobs in the local industry but it makes everything cheaper for local locals um, demanding goods and services.